This will be one of the rather quicker segments of this whole series. And I'll be going over just this top part right here. The editor of the Librarian Tone Central and System. System being the most complicated of the four. So the editor, this, this is your editor all through here. This is where you make the magic happen. That's right, you make the magic happen. I'll, uh, I'll cover more on this once we dive deeper into Tone Studio, and I'll give you a basics of it in, in, a, in a couple more chapters. Next, you got Librarian. This is where you save all your uh, live sets. After you download them, you import them to here. You can arrange them, delete them, group them together however you want. That's another video as well. Then you got Tone Central. Tone Central is a part. It's a... Uh, it's a part of the katana where you can actually go in and download live sets from some uh, different artists or authentic camp tones and you can download them all at once and yeah you might see some other ones on the boss website but you cannot download those because they're not made for the mark II. just these ones here it's, i know it's a bummer and then lastly system system is uh, is a little complicated all right, so line out settings. This is where you uh, adjust your line out settings. In the back, you got the uh, the phones out record, and this is where you make those setting adjustments right here. I don't know why it's not letting me line out right there. Oh, that's because of custom settings. So, right here, you got three different settings for recording, for a live session, or to blend it up. You can do either of those. Right now, I am. I, I normally use the recording. I said right now, but that was before. I'm not doing anything like that right now. I don't even have a guitar hooked up to the amp. I just have it on so I can get into Tone Studio. So you can either you can choose any one of these three. Now to come down here, turn on custom settings. You got mic one and mic two. You can use either or those. You can switch in between them whenever you need to, but you can only run one at a time. Let's start right at the top. The DNY57 is made to simulate a Shure SM57. The DYN421 is made to simulate a Sennheiser MD421. You got the CND451 is simulates an AKG C451. CND87, there's a bunch of different 87 microphones, so this is supposed to uh, emulate a vintage 87 type large diaphragm and lastly RBN 121 a ribbon Royer R121 microphone now over here you have uh, the distance the mic distance from the grill of the speaker so you can put it right up next to it or you can put it as far as 20 centimeters away and then mic position either dead center or offset by 10 centimeters power amp setting in now on the back of your amp you have a power amp setting in if you watch the very first video it shows that uh, you can plug different multi effects into it and here are the settings for that you got high pass filter you can have it flat or you can adjust the uh, decibels higher or lower actually it's just flat or lower and over here, the high pass frequency, you can adjust it from 1 hertz all the way up to 100. And lastly, the level, you can reduce it by 20 decibels or increase it by 20 decibels. Next thing, you got your global EQ. This is can be one of your best friends in a live and just jam session. You can choose your position for the global EQ or either, either input Output, line out, or SP out. Now you got three different ones. You got, I mean, it's red, or green, red, and yellow. So it's just, that's how they differentiate them. Now you got two different types. You got a parametric EQ, or you got a 10 band EQ. Now let me uh, just demonstrate here. You can set them, move on to the next one, and I'm just going to turn that one all the way up. And then the next one, I'm going to turn this one all the way down. So next time you go in, either if they're off, bam, you can see where I made the adjustments. I made the adjustments, and I made the adjustments. So those are always available. You can tweak those to your own desire and have them ready at the touch of a button. If you got the artist. 
everything else, you need to have either Tone Studio or some kind of mobile app to use them. So let's uh, let's put this back up to zero. That one back down. And we'll fix those later. And these up to zeros again. And if you double click it, you can fine tune it. Bam. Double click, fine tune. And we're back. But you can turn those on and off. On and off just means on the amp, it's on. And one of them is selected. On off, it's not selected at all. Now, USB settings. This is a little more complicated. This was for, like, recording USB out. You have a mix level you can adjust. You can adjust it from 0 to 200%. You have effects out level from 0 to 200%. And then you have the dry out level, like your, your dry clean signal. You can 100 or 0 to 200%. Make those adjustments. And then two effects level, I'm assuming this has something to do with a loopback. I'm not sure. It, it's it's kind of tough because Boss just wants you to figure some of this stuff out on your own. And it takes a lot of digging in Google to find the right answers. And sometimes you don't even find that. But the loopback here... So the USB can work both, both ways. It can send and it can receive. So if you turn the loop back on, it can receive audio in as well. MIDI settings. You can set up MIDI settings to uh, control your katana with a foot controller. I'm not sure exactly how. I have never done it. But if you're familiar with uh, MIDI, you can go in and change all these settings. This is why I called the video almost everything you need to know about the katana. Because it's almost everything. Because I don't know everything right down to exactly how everything works. But I know the features. Now the owner's manual, you click here, you click here, you download the owner's manual. It's that easy. Device settings, when you uh, launch your katana it, and then launch Tone Studio... It'll come up and it'll ask you, you know, which which one do you want to select? It's always Katana if you're just trying to do Katana. Um, you can use the Katana as a DAW controller or as a control. And MIDI in is and outs, it's the same thing. You hit OK. And then version, this just tells you what version of the firmware you're using. And this is all data backup. Now... You can back all data up to a file, or you can restore that file. Now, I'm going to close this real quick, and we're going to come back to us. We're going to go to librarian. If you're doing all data backup, it doesn't copy your entire library. It only copies the patches you have in bank A and B. So if you do a full system backup, it's only going to copy these settings, the settings for these ones, for A and B bank. And when you restore it, It'll save the file for wherever you want to save it to. And when you restore it, you hit Restore from File, and you go and find that file. And then it'll restore, and there'll be, you know... It's not a bad idea to do a backup once in a while, especially if you got some tones that are really important to you. I usually drag and drop them into a new live set if I want to back them up. Or if, you know, this is also good if you have to install... If you got a new computer... And you have to install your live sets. That's where it goes. Alrighty. That covers it. And the next chapter I'll be covering is downloading and installing patches in Tone Studio and Tone Central. And editing and clearing and writing. And this particular video was uh, uploaded and made uh, probably two years ago or so. So it, it might look a little old. Or the quality might not as be as good as this one might be better. Heck, I don't know. But that's where it came from. I'm piecing all this stuff together, and I already had some videos made. So let's move on to downloading and installing patches in Tone Studio.